finally, finally, our brother came to sit with us live from the, the Dream Hotel. My boy, Rich Homie Chief, and y'all know, sitting over there, world champion, all pro, arguably, I don't even know if it's arguably, but we'll say arguably for the sake of conversation. Cool. Best cornerback in the business, Jalen Ramsey. Yes, sir. Yeah. No, I appreciate, appreciate it, man. It's, it's, it's time. It's about time. It's time. It's time. You know? Yeah, no, this, this is special. Like, I was thinking on the way driving up here from Long Beach, like, you have those full circle moments, right? Mm-hmm. And um, for everybody who don't know, we, we launched the podcast, you know, 15th episode is coming soon. And, um, but early, early on, Jalen, DR, Micah were early supporters of the vision way before we even started and um, what we were putting together, you know. So um, being able to finally sit down and, and, and have this conversation and, um, you know, it's, it's a special moment and I'm, I'm just looking forward to it. It's also special because uh, the, the, the king over here, the young king yesterday played, if I'm not mistaken, played in his 100th NFL game yesterday. Yes, Talk yes, to him. A hundred. Hundred. Hundred, man. One hundred, man. That's crazy. To just um, it's crazy to say. It's crazy to think about. You know, um, man. It like I knew it sometime during the year I was gonna get to my hundredth game. God mm-hmm. willing, right? Mm-hmm. It never really sunk in until like last week, just during preparation and everything. I'm like, man, I'm really. I'm about to do something that, like, can't nobody where I'm from say that they that they've done like, and especially they ain't never done it like me. You know what I mean? Like, not not arrogant, not in an arrogant way, but that's just a fact. Like, they ain't never ain't nobody where I'm from ever done it like me. Like, yeah, ain't nobody where I'm from ever done played a hundred NFL games in seven seasons and three first team All Pros, five Pro Bowl. Like, ain't nobody from where I'm from ever did that. So. Man, it's amazing. I, all, I, all I do is like thank God because I'm like, man, like the people you put me around, you know, the, the people that God has blessed me to be around through, mm-hmm. throughout my journey, the situations he's blessed me to be in throughout my journey. It's like, like I really feel special and chosen by, by him. Only God. Ordained. Yeah. Ordained by God, steps. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, because, man, like. All my homies from back home, like they would, they would love, they would kill to be in this position, like mm-hmm. and live out these dreams that we had as little kids. So, like, for it to be me, like, for this to be happening to me, like, man, it's amazing, like, just amazing. And and like after the game, I was talking to my family and everybody about it, and I'm like, man, it's crazy because you know you think like these big milestones mean mean a lot, right? Which they mm-hmm. do. Um, you know, like my first NFL game, like it meant a lot, but I lost my first NFL game, you know what I mean? Okay. But it didn't stop it from being a, like my first NFL game, like, yo, my dream still came true on this day. It was still a big day, it's still a big moment, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like all the feelings were still there, like, wow, this is amazing. Don't get it twisted on like losing ever, but yeah. like I still embrace mm-hmm. all of that. Um, and then the same with my 100th NFL game. We ended up losing, but it's like, I think about it and I, and, I, and I take all my feelings and emotions in and I'm like, man, I'm so blessed regardless. Like, I'm so blessed and regardless of how this game is going. Like, I was thinking this during the game. Like, mm-hmm. we were losing during the game mm-hmm. and I was just thinking in my head, like, man, I'm still blessed. Like, mm-hmm. don't take this for granted because we losing. Don't get mad and don't go, don't give it your all on any play that you that you mm-hmm. playing. Like, just... Just like having that constant, like it just certain milestones just make you be so grateful and so thankful. Yeah. And it make you just live in the moment, no matter what what's going on around you. You know what I mean? And um, like like we had this conversation, like us three, we had this conversation before, like yeah, yeah. When, after the Super Bowl when we was like in SoFi and, and y'all yeah. was like, man, how you how you feel about it? And I'm just like, man, I told y'all the same thing then. Like during that milestone, I'm just taking it all in yeah. in the moment, like being grateful and thankful for all the accomplishments, everything that led me to this point, and all the people who led me to this point. Um, Cause y- y'all even know in the Super Bowl, it didn't go exactly like the, the actual game, didn't mm-hmm. go exactly how we had planned, how I planned, but 
man, the whole moment was just like, man, don't, don't let like a little hiccup or you know something that didn't go your way take your joy and take your uh, you know gratefulness and thankfulness away from this huge milestone. That at the end of the day, God still blessed you with this. <clears throat> like God still mm-hmm. blessed you to be in this position. You know what I mean? So you got a Lombardi Trophy. Yeah, and you got a ring. Man, I, man, I, man, I've been blessed with so much. I got so much. I, I got the accolades. I got, I got all that, mm-hmm. man. I'm, I've got been your so health, blessed. your family. My man, like <laughs> I'm so blessed. It's like, man, I can't. Like, yeah, I gotta keep my motivation and my ambition and, and yeah. all that stuff. But yeah. I, I can't, I can't let it get to a point where I'm like getting down on myself, or I'm not being thankful and grateful for the, the present moments that I'm in. Um, and you know, worshiping God and, and praising God because man, once I start doing that, it and it ain't gonna be there no more. He gonna take that away. Like, yeah. So hmm. that's how I was feeling with my hundredth game, man. That's even crazy. though we lost, man, I've just been so I've been feeling so grateful, so and thankful, man. Has the little boy from Smyrna hmm. when when did he start? walking this down this dream down when do you was it was it there because i know your father is also plays a huge role he's mm-hmm. your he's your trainer mm-hmm. right so when when did you start walking this down matter of fact just tell us about early life for Jalen ramsey yeah. like what's what's early Jalen ramsey life like man so for the people who don't know my my dad is a he's a fireman okay. for the nashville fire department well now he's a fire chief so he been doing it for basically my whole life. Okay. You know, twenty five plus years he's been a fireman. Hasn't you know. retired yet. No, nah, he ain't retired yet. <laughs> he, he won't retire. For whatever reason. For whatever reason. But um so you gotta think, like this man, I saw this man wake up at like four in the morning, get ready to go to work, be at work for twenty four hours, like they had twenty four hours, forty eight hours, like be at work for twenty four hours, on call whenever, like first respond to people's lives depending on them doing their job the right way. So he had mm-hmm. to be focused, detailed, disciplined. Mm-hmm. Like he had all of the attributes that, that I could dream about wanting as a as a as a young boy, a teenager, a man, like a football player, he had all of them. Like first responders, they have all of them. They yeah. gotta be accountable. You know, they gotta work together as a with with, with a team. Like they got to know their job. They got to execute their job. Like they got to be focused, disciplined, like everything. Ain't no time to be lazy. Ain't no time to, to slip up. You can't make no mistake. Like real deal, people's lives depend on you sometimes Absolutely. in these situations. So seeing all of that growing up, um, seeing him do that, and then the same, like seeing my mom work her ass off too, like wake up every single day and go to work. Okay. And like 6 o'clock. But not only that, but make sure me and my brother were straight first. Let me make sure they straight. Then I got to still go to work. Then I got to go to work. Then I got to go pick the boys up. Then I got to do this. Then I got to do that. Like seeing them too, the way the way they went about like working and their business and making sure the fam was straight and making really making sure me and my brother was straight and still didn't miss no games, didn't miss no uh, activities, no no school trips, no nothing. Didn't miss no parent teacher conferences was still at everything. I'm like, yo, this is dedication. So hmm. I learned early, like, yeah. this is how it gotta be. Like, this is how dedicated I need to be at whatever I'ma do in life. Absolutely. And that's what they preach too. Like, man, whatever you do in life, we don't, we don't care what y'all do, but whatever you do, you gonna be the best at it. You gonna be that dedicated, like, at whatever you do. And um, naturally, I've, I'm the baby of my family. Like, I'm the, okay. I'm the, I'm the youngest boy. Uh, how many total? It's just me and my older brother, but I got okay. three, four older cousins. Yeah. And, and, and all my older cousins, brother, they all play, you know, collegiate sports, whether it was football or basketball, all of them. Okay. So I'm the baby out of all the, all, the, all the boys in the family. So naturally, I was going to gravitate to sports, you know what I mean? And, and yeah. just being around them, I gravitated to sports and I gravitated to football. It, most of us were football. There's a couple of basketball, but most of us were football. Gravitated to football and you know those same things that my parents instilled with me in life like just carried over to football yeah. And I and I love football so much and I that's what I wanted to do. So I'm like 
Man, my parents told me whatever I want to do, I got to be the happen. best at it. So that <clears throat> that 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 led to where I'm at now. Like that that laid the foundation. Yeah. So who I am now and what I do now and what's led me to this point. And then obviously, of course, like God been on my side, and I truly believe that. Like God been on my side. I, he done. He put me around the right people in the right situations. Like I, you know, I get people. Some people call it like luck or uh, the big nah. breaks and stuff like that. Like, nah, it's God. It's like, God moving. God, God. Yeah. He orchestrated all this in my favor. Like, I really believe that. So you found, I mean, you really identified your purpose at a young age, and then instilled what your parents, you know, under their tutelage that when did um you know i know you love football but mm -hmm. was it like ninth grade eighth grade when you're like being from a small city also too mm -hmm. were you like this is this is all i want to do and how do you get you know for i know there's so many kids that are out there that live in small cities and might not get the eyeballs and mm -hmm. the, the opportunities as other kids in major cities how did you go about making sure that your skills were showcased and you know you were able to find that path and, and get noticed and you know take the next steps for college and, and those things uh my parents again my okay. parents throwing me in that fire making me do stuff uh being there to support me whether i uh failed or succeeded in whatever it was i was doing a lot of that was them um they sacrifices taking me here and there and they just molded me so different, man. Yeah. Really, like, that's really what they did. They molded me so differently. Um, so I really, I really, like, God and my family, like, for real, for real. Important. Uh, they, like, that's what, that's why I'm still the way I am now. Like, that's what it's about for me is God and my family. Did your older brother play, too? Yeah, my older brother played. He played uh, quarterback, actually. He played quarterback uh, at a high school, signed with MTSU, Middle Tennessee State, right up the road from where oh, we live. Okay. And then he finished off his career at uh, Tennessee State. But, yeah, he played, too. So, wait, he went to Middle Tennessee State and Tennessee yep, State. Yep, yep, So, Tennessee State, HBCU, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, Middle mm -hmm. Tennessee State, our boy, our, who you introduced us to, KB, yeah, went mm -hmm. to Middle Tennessee. Okay. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, my whole fam went to, uh, basically, my whole fam went to MTSU. My dad played at MTSU way back in his days. And wow. Wait, so is this true? I heard that there was a real chance that you was going to go to Middle Tennessee. Like, you considered it. I mean, growing up, I thought it was destiny. Okay. Like, my dad played there, my brother played there. Like, you kind of think, man, it's destiny. But I was too, I was too piped up for that. I was too good for that. You know what I mean? <laughs> Not in a bad way. MTSU, cool, man. I love MTSU. I love visiting there all the time. Yeah. Like, like I said, I had family ties there. You know what I mean? And um, man, even at the time, like Coach Stockstill, who was, who was KB's coach and all that. Me and his son are the same age. Me and his son knew each other. Me and his son hung out all the time. His son ended up going to. You know, Middle Tennessee, eventually, like. What were your top three college choices? Uh, when it really came down to it, like, when it was really time for me to make a decision, it came down to Florida State, Florida, and um, I'll just say them two for now. And I'll say USC because I was committed to USC, Southern California out here. I was committed to Southern California for <laughs> almost a year, almost a year. Uh, you was going to be a Trojan? I was going to be a Trojan, man. I wanted to be extremely bad. Um, and, uh, man, I remember as soon as they offered me, I was ready to commit, like, ASAP. Uh, my parents was like, man, hold your horses. Like, you know, take a visit there at least, yada, yada. I did that, and then as soon as I took my visit, I'm like, I'm ready to commit. Like, I was persistent with wanting to commit to USC. I wanted to be there. It was one of my dream schools. DB mm -hmm. University. That's what it's considered. I don't think it's considered. No, no. I, come on. Come on. <laughs> Who considers it that? I don't think anybody considers it. It was for a long time. I ain't never heard that I've one never before. I've never heard that in my life. What, do you, what, 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 what was it considered? Is it tailback you? It's nothing. Uh, it's just at you. one time. Uh, you talking about like Ronnie from Ronnie Lot to like all the way. They up had some good safeties, but uh, they weren't deep. You on that bullshit right now? <laughs> 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 yeah, no. Name Florida State, so Florida oh, yeah. FSU. Come on, 
No, I know. Deion I, Sanders, Deion, I knew Terrell Buckley. Buckley. Terrell Buckley, Buckley was that was shit. Cromartie. Yeah. Come on, man. And them the guys right before, before me. And then me, Derwin. And they, come on, man. Okay. He said the DBU. Hey, listen. On, <laughs> a lot of people would say, yo, Ronnie Lott is considered, is he not considered the best safety of all time? Ronnie Lott, I don't even think it's questionable. Oh, uh, now you're tripping, lady. I'm asking uh, now you. you it's questionable, yes. I agree, man. Uh, legendary. Like, that's why he's a Hall of Famer. That's why he is who he is. That's why we talk about him still. But, mm -hmm. but like, come on, man. You got Ed Reed. What are you talking about? You got Ed Reed. You talking about Ed Reed ain't the best ever? <laughs> Ed Reed ain't the best ever? I mean, I and that's, I, that's, that's just me. <laughs> but but you got, like, Ed Reed, Troy Palmolo. You got... Yeah. Uh, you, Troy went better than Ronnie Lott. Okay, I get that, but Ed Reed? Ed Reed, Ronnie. the I conversation you got, now, you, you got me. The con Ed Reed, we, yeah, yeah, we got so Ed was, Ed was, Ed Reed was different. So unbelievable. He different. Different. Super different. But look, I, I, we digress. So just, so you walk onto the campus of, uh, of FSU in Tallahassee, and, okay, so after being a, a, an illustrious high school career, Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and now you're at the campus at FSU. You're starting over again, right? You're, you, yep. and, 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 and like you're starting over at every yep. level. You start over again. What is uh, there? Is there a daunting moment where you ever why, when you get to FSU where you're like, man, maybe this ain't this. This ain't it. Hmm. Maybe I ain't it. Do you have those moments? No, nah, not me. I love Not you. me. I told you. I told you. God done blessed me, and it, man, He done blessed me so much. I look at any and everything that I do, and I'm like, man, it's I'm here for a reason. God put me in this position for a reason. Like whether it's a, I I was I was uh, recently just talking to my my chaplain about this. Uh, we was talking about just positive thinking and stuff like that, because what you put in your mind is what you. Like how you are usually, Absolutely. and I'm already like that. I'm a glass half full type of guy. I'm not. Mm -hmm. a, I'm not a glass half empty type of guy. I'm always glass half full. Like, man, I ain't gonna lie. Like we we out there. This I can just talk about this past Sunday. We losing like seventeen to three in the third quarter, and in my mind, I'm like somehow, some way, we gonna find a way to come back and win the game, and then we down twenty four to. Uh, 24 to 10. Still in my mind, I'm like, somehow we gonna score a touchdown, then we're gonna get a turnover, score another touchdown, we right back on the game. Like, it's never really, I'm always glass half full. Like, it's never really like, dang, if we, I'm in this position now, it's always like, all right, I'm in this position now, but it's about to flip. Like, I always think that in my mind, it's about to flip, something about to change. Like, okay. Something's gonna change. If I'm late, if I'm late going into work, I don't think like, man, I'm, man, I'm, man, got, I'm, I'm moving this way this morning because there's a reason. It's a re I'm okay. always like that. Like, okay. it's always a positive so, okay. to me. Sense. Like, yeah. so no, I never, I never had that moment where I didn't think that I was meant to do great things, meant to be on a big stage, influencing people and having a, having an influence. Never, never in my life. Like, and I think that's also helped me. You know what I mean? Like. I was the first freshman to start at cornerback since Deion Sanders at Florida State. Like, that's huge. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I just named a couple other people who just came before me who, it's Terrell Buckley, top five pick, Cromartie. Like, everybody, these guys came before me, and there's even more that I can name. These guys came before me, but I'm the <clears> first <throat> freshman to start since Deion Sanders? Yeah. At Florida State? First yeah. freshman to start his first game since Deion Sanders in my – and what I do, I get a pick in my very first college game. Started every single game in college. Have started every single game in my NFL career. Like, man, I, yeah. like, I'm blessed, man. I'm so blessed. Like, and I, and obviously, like, I put the work in too. Like, don't yeah. get it twisted. Like, yeah, I definitely, yeah, yeah. And that's 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 why you can feel the way you yeah, feel. Yeah, like I definitely do that. I definitely yeah. do that as well. But, man, I feel like step one is is knowing that I belong. Not that part. Knowing that I belong in these rooms, knowing that I belong on this field with these guys, knowing I belong here. So I ain't, I ain't, I'm going out there, I ain't, I ain't playing with no fear. I ain't playing timid. 
I'm gonna do everything that I know I can do plus more, plus what I didn't even know I could do. Yeah. Like, I feel like I'm gonna go out there and like people say, man, he turned into a different beast out there sometimes. Like, nah, I don't turn into no beast. I turn into, I turn into, man, that's God's, holy, that's the Holy Spirit coming through me right now. Like, y'all, it's it's something different, but it ain't no beast. It's That's godly. <laughs> like, like that's how I feel. I ain't gonna yeah. lie to you. Like, that's personally how I feel yeah. like, when I'm out there. Like, I belong, man. Yeah. Like, I, I belong wherever I'm at. And that's in life, too, though. Like, man, I belong in these buildings with these execs. I belong, you know, wherever. I, I belong right here in these same rooms as these guys. I belong. Like, it ain't too, it ain't, I'm here for a reason. God put me here. I love that. That's I how love I feel. that. I love I, that. I think we, I think, um, and I think I know that we, our culture, we need that mindset. Mm-hmm. We need that mindset every single day. Absolutely. Because uh, the reality of it is, is we're shown things through other lenses that would have us doubting, Mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying, our standing. And so I I love you. I love you. I don't even want to say it's confidence. You put the work in, bro. Like you said, you put the work in and then your belief and then uh, uh again it's, it, that's exemplary that's an exemplary quality yeah. that people need to have like <clears throat> we all need to we yeah. need to have that like i belong here yeah, i'm supposed live, to be right here in this moment mm-hmm. i mean the culture now in the climate is everything needs to be validated by somebody whether that's comments on social media mm-hmm. or somebody telling you you're doing a good mm-hmm. job or somebody. And I think, mm-hmm. you know, I, I was I was thinking of the word resilience, but it's way further than that. And I think, you know, the purpose in your faith also, too, where it's a higher calling, you know what I mean? Like mm-hmm. you're destined, you've already, you know what you're destined for and you keep continue to grow in that. But again, to your point, it's like, <clears throat> People need to hear this because we need to understand we don't need to be validated by people to go out and be our best. You should wake up and be able to look at yourself or say something to the most high and be like, I'm this is for me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because Mm -hmm. and that's why when you peel back the curtain, so many people are in so much pain is because they need that constant like reassurance, reassurance that which would drive you crazy. It would drive you crazy. Cause you always like searching for validation as opposed to it being like, yo, this is what's supposed to happen. If I put in the work, if I treat people well, if I do, you know, I check all the boxes on the, on the things that are absolutely important in this life. I, I'm only supposed to sit right here. Absolutely. I, I built this table. Like I'm, I'm, I'm supposed to, you know what I mean? I built this table. <clears throat> Um, it's all God though. Like that's literally yeah, yeah, yeah. as we speak, it's all God. Like yeah. what we talking about is actually like it's biblical, you know what I mean? Like yeah. if you really tapped in, you know, if you tapped into the word, you tapped into God, like you read that Bible, man, you gonna find examples over and over and over and over again where he telling you you a king, mm-hmm. you destined for greatness. Like whatever you thought you was going to get blessed with, I'm going to bless you with double and triple. And I'm going to make you, you know, the ruler of many nations. You thought you was going to get this, I'm going to give you this. Like, it's all biblical. Written. Like, (laughs) it's in there. So when you tap in, man. (laughs) So, like, that's what I do. You you want to talk about, like, the validation and stuff? It's true. Like, man, it's so easy to want to look for validation from social media or, or somebody you may looked up to or this or that. Man, people are always going to let you down. Unfortunately, but when you tap into that word, if I'm looking, if I'm, man, if I'm going back and I'm seeing what God say about me, oh, he said, man, he say I'm a king. <laughs> what are you talking about? He said I'm a king. You can't tell me I'm not. He said I'm a king. That's real. So I'm tapping, I tap in like every day. You know, that's, that's just me. I tap in every day. I make sure I stay tapped in. Yeah. He telling me I'm a king. Then I, I feed myself with, with all this, this, this positiveness yeah. and what's, what, what, what the Lord and what God truly say is me. Man, you're a king. You blessed. You this. You, you gon' You got greatness still on the way. I ain't done with you. I ain't finished with you. This, 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 and then I got the faith. 
Yeah. You gotta have faith. That's biblical as well. Then, yeah. then what, it, what it also say? Faith without works is dead, it's though. Dead, yeah. And that's the part where you, all right, I got this. I know I'm destined for this. I know I'm a king. I know this is coming. I got the faith, but I also gotta go put the work in, too. Yeah. You gotta go to work. Yeah. So it's all of it. And, like, all of it is biblical. Like, that's really how I, how I approach life. That's how I approach life. Like, yeah. that's how I'm raising my kids, everything. <clears throat> yeah. Like, well, they say um, when you're trusted with little, you know, he'll give you more. Um, those those could be trusted with, but I, I completely agree, man. Like that higher that higher power, that higher source, is just something you got to lean on to because, you know, you'll never get it. You'll never get that through another person, and it don't mm-hmm. matter. Your parents, your parents have disappointed you. Your mm-hmm. your mom, the people you love, the closest to you, you know. So um, that's just it's just so powerful to hear. Question: um, Seven years in the league now, right? Yep. Where do you feel, and this is, I think, more off the field, has the growth been, you know, the most in, in your life that you, you know, that you're like? Man. Having kids. Mm-hmm. You know? Okay. Um, my first uh, couple of years in the league, I didn't have no kids. I was, you know, a young bachelor living the life, mm-hmm. really, just living out here, doing what I wanted to do when I wanted to do it, enjoying you know, enjoying everything that came with being a, you know, NFL. Playing in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. just enjoying yeah. life, right? Yeah. Man. Once you have kids, though, especially if you if you a man and you have daughters, and especially if you are, uh, like, a big fierce, like, I play football, you one of them men, and then you have daughters. And then you have another daughter. And then you have another <laughs> daughter. Like, man, it changed your whole, it changed you up. Yeah. It changed you up. Like, I'm still who I am. You know what I mean? When I got to flip that switch on that field, I still, I'm still who I am. But, man, like, the patience, <laughs> the, you know, just everything. Really, my daughters have helped me in so many aspects that, obviously, they so young right now, they don't even know. But, like, man, they've helped me be a better leader. Yeah. Um, just because, like, man, just think about it. Like, with kids, you don't all, Sometimes they can't communicate, you know, thoroughly what's going on with them, and, and you mm-hmm. got to figure out how to. And they all so different, so then you got to figure out how to lead them. As your dad, how, how do I lead you t- to to do it? What, what I need you to do, and what without you need you to shutting do down, or without it. it being, I, I might have to do that different with different with my little Breland than I do it with my little Junie or with my little Brooklyn. Like they all different, so I might have to. Treat them a little bit differently. Breland, yeah. I can get on her a little bit. She gonna respond, and get it right back. All right, she might not. She ain't gonna do it again. The Brooklyn, she gonna cry if I get on her. So I gotta, I gotta approach it a little bit different. Junie, she a thug. She, <laughs> she, she on whatever, and then she gonna get in trouble again. She don't care. She, <laughs> like, it's just different for for everybody, and that's how it is. Like, yeah. being a leader on a football team, everybody's different. Everybody in my secondary is different. I can talk to uh, one of my teammates, and they get it right away. I can talk to another one of my teammates and they might not get it or they might not feel it or, you know, some of my teammates have a little bit more confidence than the other. Mm-hmm. And I got to approach that different. Got to pour a little bit more confidence in him. But this one, I can just tell him straight up, I ain't got to sugar, sugarcoat nothing. Like, they don't even know, man. They, they've helped me with my patience, dealing with my teammates and dealing with people in general, being a leader on in, in, the, in the locker room. Like, like, that's probably helped me the most. Um, it's like just like them little things, them in, them intangibles. I was saying, and that all comes, stri- that all strictly comes from my daughters. And then obviously, you know, just regular growth and going through yeah. experiences and life and stuff like that has helped me grow too. But my daughters get a lot of credit for, for the man that I have uh, changed become. into and the man who I've become for sure. And develop, continue to develop mm-hmm. into. Mm-hmm. Yep. Mm-hmm. We right now we're like, uh, we're seeing a lot of. Um, I don't, I want to I want to put this right. Uh specifically in the NBA, right? Mm. We are we are seeing a moment where uh yeah, let's talk about it, man. No, we're going to talk let's about talk it. Let's talk about it. Come yeah. on. <laughs> let's talk yeah. about it. Why not? Come on. What Let's not even be around. how do you yeah. what do you what do you feel about What's going on with Kyrie? Um, 
And maybe I should be more specific. I want to be more specific. Okay. I, uh, I don't even have to say, uh, yeah, I don't even have to talk about that. Uh, how do you, uh, the way he is being punished mm. or not, no, uh, you're, you're saying it right. Punished. He's being punished. Okay. Yeah. How how uh, after acknowledging, I made a mistake, or uh, I, I made a mistake, or so, is is not it, even, not even, okay, not even, not even, not even, not even. I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say that. Um, yes, it, it just depends. Like I said, I'm a glass half full type person, so yeah, yeah, even yeah. a mistake to me is like a growing moment. It's a you can it's find a growing right? moment. So that's yeah, how, that's yeah, how yeah. I think. teachable but, moment. Yeah, right. So that's okay. how I think. So, so how I look at that situation is, um, man, I tweeted something out the other day about this. I was like, uh, in today's society, the truth messes up the story. And if you think about that. Like, really think about that. The stories that are portrayed most of the times, and like the headlines and the stuff like that, like, wow, amazing, boom, big, whatever, whatever. But then when you actually read the truth, you're a little less amused. Mm. You're like, oh, that story was good, though. Like, the story was good. So you kind of want to stick with the story. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I, I have a perfect example. Like, in my life, um, currently, right now, I just played my 100th game, right? Mm -hmm. I played, so the story, the story that I told some people, some people uh, who wanted to hear was like, man, I'm playing in my 100th game, and it's crazy because I played 50 games, I played 50 games with the Jacksonville Jaguars and 50 games with the LA Rams. How crazy is that? Like, cut right in the middle of my 100th game. I, I played 50 games with them, and I played 50 games with the Rams. That's not the truth. I played <laughs> 51 games with the Jags. And I played 49 games with the Rams so far, technically. So still you go 100, but the story, the story sound man. better saying, <laughs> 50, oh, it's 50-50. Mm. So we're going to, you know, for the yeah. headlines and stuff, we're going to stick with that story a little bit. But the truth is a, it's a little less amusing. It's like a little less, wow, 50 and 50. <clears throat> You're not going to get that same reaction with 51 and 49. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's, the, that's like the society, society that we're in right now. Like, when people actually go listen to what he said and how he's explaining it, he's like, "Yo, I ain't got no like, I ain't got no hate in my heart. If I if I offended anybody, I'm I'm sorry. That's not why I was looking at the documentary. I'm trying to explore my ancestry. I'm trying to explore my familiar history. Right. I'm trying to explore something for me. That don't mean I'm trying to have hate for nobody else. People don't want to hear that. That's actually what he said, right? Yeah. Um, so that that's unfortunate. That is super unfortunate. But two, I, I I I'm not a fan of like the cancel culture and all of that because, man, it like since since when can somebody not make a mistake? Yeah. Like we all have made mistakes. Like when can somebody not make a mistake, and you know apologize for it and move on? Especially when you know that one day intention is to be hateful or harmful in any type of way anyway. Yeah. Like so. So with what's going on with him right now, man, yes, I, man, I, like me, I ain't got no hate in my heart, no nothing, none of that. But like, if I do something to offend you, yo, I'm sorry, I ain't even mean to offend you. And then why can't we just move on? Yeah. Like we got difference of opinion, we got different views, now why can't we move on? Or why can't we have constructive conversation? Yeah. So we can understand each, each other. Each other. That's, the thing that exactly. I don't that's like. what I don't like. You, you know ain't, I mean? and, and you ain't gotta exploit in 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 essence, like you ain't gotta exploit me. I, I shouldn't have to man, I made a mistake and now I gotta pay you five hundred K and then I gotta do go do this and do that and do this and do that. Man, no, nah, yeah. like, yo, I apologize. Man, if I can get better, I ain't even mean it that way. This is why I was watching the documentary, right? Boom. It I didn't even really pay attention to these parts, so I'm learning this with you. I, I, I hate that that's in there for you. But that's mm -hmm. not why I was looking at it, though. Mm -hmm. Like, and then let's keep it pushing. And then, like, in, in our culture, like, like people can, I, I don't like how it's not the same. Like, you know, somebody, somebody will, and I don't want to get into specific people or nothing, but somebody can say, come on and say, nigga. You know, a white person can come on the show and say, nigga, a hundred times if they want to. 
and then uh, apologize. And there's the, like, there's no then, further ramifications. Well, that's oh, it. it's not even even more. It's like, well, you got. It's still that. Well, you say it. Like, is then, it really that? You right. And then, and then, and then we you move say on. it. We get the you say it. Right. And then, and then we move on. And you gotta pay no five hundred k. It is, and then you gotta go talk to all the all the black leaders. You gotta. <laughs> yeah. Man, what? Like, why? Why is it not the same? Like. Yeah. And I, and you can have, man. People gotta understand. You can have different views and just still keep it pushing. Like. Yeah. You still keep it pushing. Like Absolutely. I, like I, I believe in whipping your ch whipping your children sometimes some people might not believe in whipping your children like i might be all the way on this end like nah they need to get whooped my homie might be all the way on that end don't yeah, like talk kids. to him yeah <laughs> yeah and that don't mean we can't all right we disagree on this thing now we Absolutely. can keep moving on that that's like i think i think i think jesus is black just because a white person telling me jesus ain't black don't mean we can't be cool don't like, yeah, yeah that don't that, you didn't offend me because your belief is different than my belief, that didn't offend me. Yeah, I, that's just me. I I per, I believe Jesus is black. You believe you white. Okay, we have a difference of opinion. We agree to disagree, and we can keep it pushing. And like, we can still be friends. Yeah, I we, mean, can, we keep can keep it pushing. pushing. Yeah, you you, right. you telling me that Je you don't think that Jesus is black? That that's not. You didn't harm me. That didn't. You not gonna change. That wasn't. That wasn't hateful to me that you said, man. He ain't like he ain't black. That's what you believe. I just disagree with you. He black though to me. Like he black, just like all that. They black to me. <laughs> like you know what I mean. Like yeah. I think we in a space right now that's really weird, and it, and it. I think it like comes from like the cancel culture, and then so many people just like yeah piling on, piling on, and jumping jumping onto it. I'm not a fan of like. Yeah. Man, I'm I'm never I'm never gonna be a fan of intentionally trying to trying to harm somebody or be hateful to any. Anybody, anybody, any anybody. race, any yeah. culture. I ain't no yeah. fan of that ever. Yeah. But I'm also a man of like I believe in second chances and stuff as well. Absolutely. I do I do believe in that. Like we all need grace. We all, we all I hell mean it's, yeah. it's daily. It we walk through it daily, but I feel like the society now is is pitted everybody against each other where one you can't not like something and not be deemed a hater. Mm -hmm. You can't disagree with somebody with not being labeled or racist or, you know, something else. And mm -hmm. we have to figure out, and I, and I think it's just, unfortunately, it's so social media driven. It's a, Caleb Plant said this, it's the top, top comment syndrome. Like everybody wants something where people are like, I like this, I like this. And we've also stopped as a, as a, a nation and as just people in general of the curiosity of learning about each other and other races and other people's beliefs like we have to take more stock in each other right because everybody's I mean? every that that you're right because like everybody's everybody's ahead of everybody oh he's offended you're not like you know you'll see on social media it'll be uh you don't see this happening over here and you're not talking about it. You don't see this happening over here and you're not talking about it. You don't see it. everybody everybody is a vi what's happening in Iran is important. What's happening in in the Congo is important. What's happening in China is important. Mm -hmm. But we we that's the thing is that it all has to be acknowledged. Mm -hmm. We can't we can't acknowledge like just what we want to. It's all painful, and I, I, I just I hope I, I hope that we begin to find a way to uh, be more uh, healing towards one another. Like we gotta heal, man. There's there's a lot of healing that needs to take place because right now everybody is offended. Nobody is hearing anyone. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Talking over each other. And talking <laughs> over each other. You know, someone thinks you don't care about their point of view. I, I had a friend literally hit me, and this is a dear friend, hit me on social media, DM, and said, I, I, I didn't see you, you know, friend to friend, I didn't see you condemn Kanye or mm. Kyrie. And I was like, I said, you are my friend and we are family. I said, and I feel like that this conversation shouldn't be ha happen over text. We should definitely sit down and have dialogue back and forth because just because we are friends. 
Like, you don't want, I, I don't want to give you a half-ass thing. And, and I'm not thinking, I'm probably not thinking at all what you think I'm thinking. And I'm not sitting where you think I'm sitting. I just feel like, to be very honest, I, ha I know because of how I look, I got to be more careful than you are. I got to be careful about what I say. You know what I'm saying? Because the repercussions for me and us and our careers are totally different. Mm -hmm. So I have to be careful and I don't want it misconstrued. Mm -hmm. So that also is a reason we got to mm -hmm. sit down at the table and have the dialogue. We have to do a better job of, 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 of really wanting to listen to each other. Like, because no, again, nobody's hearing each other right now. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I also feel like for us, if we're being completely honest, you know, we have to be, I gotta, I, I gotta think before I just shout out some shit. Context. I have to, but other, but everybody don't have to. Everybody don't have to give context. We do. Yeah. We have to give context. We're crucified. That's yeah. the reality of it. Yeah. I mean, we just got to implore <laughs> people and I think we got to teach kids like, you got to ask questions. Uh -huh. If you don't know, like, I mean, I grew up like white best friends, Hispanic best friends, Same. all those things. Same. And you, you ask questions and we don't, as adults, we don't ask questions. You probably know 10 Jewish people. You probably know 20 Hispanic people, but we're not interested in nobody else's lives, but ours until something happens and you see everybody else in an the uproar, then it's like, oh, I care about this now. Mm -hmm. we, we, we care about, that's why, who said it, like, what y'all fake caring about today? Yeah. We uh -huh. live in a, a, so a society where we fake care about something no, every Bobby day. Uh -huh. And we have to get back to being curious about us as humans, as, as individuals, as people, as culture, because that's, that's where the human condition, that's where the love, that's where the brotherhood, that's when those kind of things, and, and it also can, can open your mind up to those things. Like you talk about like faith and Christianity. I grew up Baptist, went to, you know, my, my, my grandma and them, they're from Mississippi, New Orleans, six hour long church. It turned me off. When I got to high school, I started studying 5% Nation because uh -huh. I'm seeking and trying to find who I am. I get out of that. I'm like, this ain't right for me. And then I get introduced to somebody who was like a born again Christian. It was a little intense, but he was able to finally break it down to me. That was palpable for me to understand, mm -hmm. to make me lean in more. Got it. To be like, I want to hear this. You know what I mean? And then you find, but if, if I didn't have somebody that leaned into me, and was like, yo, let me break it down to your level. Because that's the problem is we talk to everybody as if they should know exactly what you're going through, your plight, your culture, your religion. And sometimes you gotta break things down to people to meet them at their level. Mm -hmm. And we have to just start figuring out how we do that as a person. It, it's anything simple as food. I didn't eat sushi until I was like 24 years old. It wasn't because I didn't like it. I just wasn't around it. And I didn't have somebody to be like, let me introduce you to a California roll first. <laughs> now try this. You know, it's just, it's, it's having people, it's leaning into each other. It's, I did think I was eating sushi for a long time, eating them California rolls right? from Rouse. Right? Some bullshit. You know, so. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, I'm gonna keep it so real. Again, man, like, lean into people, ask questions, you know, and, and don't feel like you're forced because of where society is that you gotta comment on everything and jump into the conversation. If you don't know, it's okay, yeah. you know? Yeah, it's crazy. It's crazy. You, uh, 100th game yesterday, like you said, right? Mm -hmm. Damn, that was just yesterday. Yeah. 100 more? <laughs> you see 100 more? If it's in God's will for me, yeah. Yeah. I used to put a limit on, uh, like, how long I wanted to play. I used uh -huh. to put a limit on how long I wanted to play. Uh -huh. Like. I would uh, like I would like when I got in the NFL, and probably like after my first year, I used to always say like, "Man, I want to play eleven or twelve years max." Okay. And I just want to get out. I, 
11 to 12 max. It, and, and if I don't get that many, I ain't tripping, right? Got it. But, um, man, the, the, like, I love this, and, and I feel like this, this gives me a, 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 a platform where I can speak about my Lord Savior Jesus Christ. I can speak about topics that need to be talked about, um, whatever. Like, I, and, and at the same time, like, I can play this kid's game that I've always loved playing as a kid and get paid to do it, right, and be around other people who are like-minded and, you know, some people who are not the same as me, and you know, I learn about them, like what we were just saying, like all of that. So I stopped putting up, probably like, before I signed my second contract, um, like probably that year before that, I stopped putting a number on it. I was like, man, however long, you know, God's gonna continue to bless me to play is how long I'm gonna play. And I'm healthy. And as long as I'm healthy, my, I'm, I'm still able to be a, a good dad, my family's good. Um, then I'm, I'm going to continue playing until, until, I, until I can't play anymore. You, you've come up in an era where, you know, last couple of years, you know, um, there was, there's a, you know, talk of CTE, right? Mm -hmm. Do you, do you get, are you concerned about that? Do you ever get concerned about that? I personally don't. Okay. Um, because I like to think I play the game the right way. Yeah. You know what I mean? I play the game the right way with the right techniques. Mm -hmm. um, don't try to do anything outside of the game. Like, yeah, I, I make big tackles, but I'm they're they're like form tackles. They're with my you, shoulders. You are, I see. You know what I for mean? Real, like, for real. like I'm I, I I play like I just feel like I play the game the right way. Calculated. Yeah, to where I try to avoid you know any any stuff like that. Um, granted, like sometimes it, it could just happen, right? It could just happen, like things happen, but. Uh, again, if, if there was ever to be a situation where I felt like it's something that I, I truly need to worry about because of my experiences, mm -hmm. then then yeah, I'll, I'll stop playing. But um, it doesn't worry me based off of other people's experiences Got it. because I know the way <clears throat> I, I yeah. play and the way that and the game is so advanced about, now yeah, too. The way I go about my business and um, you know there is a. There's more technology coming out, better helmets, better equipment, better, like, so much stuff. You're always trying to advance. Um, so that's one good thing. And it's, you know, starting to become an emphasis as of these, these like, past four or five years. And there'll just be more and more emphasis on it with, you know, accidents happening, freak accidents happening, concussions and stuff like that happening. So, um, you know, I, I have faith in, in, in God and in the yeah. process and in the journey and the advancement of the game, the advancement of equipment, the, just everything that how I play that that I don't worry about it and I don't just me as a person like I don't live in fear anyway so God, it is what it is it's outside of football uh, I know you're just a huge sports fan I know we we had mm -hmm. conversations about <laughs> boxing and all that like yeah. who are some of your current favorite athletes outside of mm. you know the hash marks mm. obviously like I'm a I'm a LeBron fan I can't help it, man. I'm a LeBron fan. LeBron, okay. is, LeBron is the goat of, of, of my era. You yeah, know what I mean? That's, absolutely. That's simple. Like, um, you know, it, it, it's definitely Kobe a little bit, but man, with like, when Bron hopped on the scene from high school is like when I really started paying attention to stuff. So it's like Bron for me, really. And um, for him to be doing this for, you know, 20 years and, all it is like, you know, I've been like I'm thinking about it now. I've been watching LeBron since I was eight years old. That's <laughs> wild. <laughs> you know what I mean? And he's still doing it at a high level. Yeah. So, I, w I would say LeBron's like my uh, the I'm the the pinnacle. Yeah, the pinnacle of, of of outside of football, of who I can be a fan of. Like, yeah. Um, yeah. So I follow him everywhere. To be honest, I was a, I was a, I was a. Cleveland fan, fan, Miami fan, now I'm a Lakers fan, like LeBron. Um, well, and then obviously like Cleveland. I know guys as well, you know yeah. what I mean? Just being in the in the space, professional athlete, you get to know other professional athletes. So a lot of a lot of different basketball players I've, I've met and I'm a fan of and I'm yeah. a fan of their game. And I got a like a different kind of respect for all of them anyway because I know what they had to put in to get to where they are and do it at this level. Um, but I, I really only, I, I watch football, and like you said, I boxing a little bit. Shakur Stevenson, he caught, he caught Tank, 
He called yeah. Tank when they fight when he fight Ryan. Go knock him out, and I and I and I rock with both of them, but lights out. But but Tank different, you know what I mean? Like I just I I like I I respect and I admire like professional athletes because I know what it takes to to get here, and it's tough, man. And, yeah. But um, you love Tank. Man, you already know. Yeah, I know it's like on. That. And it's crazy though, cause I, I was put in a bad spot, cause I I rock with Ryan too. I ain't gonna lie to you, I rock with Ryan. He, to me, he liked that too. I'm a Crawford but, fan. But Tank, you a Crawford fan? I'm a Crawford fan. I ain't gonna lie. If him and Spence have a fight, I got Spence. I ain't gonna lie to you. We gonna we we gonna. We I like both. Of, I like both of them too. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm just a fan of like you know good, other good other good people. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I lo- listen, Earl Spence. Like I he get like it. that now. I yeah. I'm, I I, I, will, I will never disrespect Earl Spence. Is nice. Yeah, he like that. And to come back from the injury that he came back from. Um, and then, like, just go back in there and, and handle homeboy uh, recently who had just dominated Pacquiao, um, even though Pacquiao's, you know, in his later years, he's, he's nice. But Bud, for me, Bud is a, a different kind oh, of dog. Oh, he's different now. He's yeah. a different he nice. kind of dog. Yeah, 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 and, say he ain't. And, and he's, uh, I want them to, I want them to, that's the thing that's that's so disappointing with boxing. I just want them to make the make the fights. Yeah. Like let's just fight. Like yeah. Pacquiao Mayweather took way too long. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I agree. Bu- like Bud it's, and Spence should be fighting right now. There's just too many belts, too many promoters. Too many. Javante you know I mean? and Ryan should be fighting. Shakur and you know Tiafimo, whoever wanted to get it, they should be fighting. But I like, agree. That's should, what we want as fans. We that's what I want to see people we fight. See it, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And I think that's why. That's why I think the UFC is popular though, because they fight. They they fight. don't care. They, and have, they don't care about one every loss weekend. record. It's yeah. A fight every weekend. I mean, and it's set up. And they have eight losses. Yeah. And the fans are still like, that's my favorite guy because yeah, they, they fighting. They run it. They run it like it's. They run it as their business. It's, mm-hmm. It's not like the NFL, right? The NFL, they don't go to the owners and say, who do you want to play this? Year? You know what I mean? Like they said everything. Boxing is there's 30 promoters and they go, I don't want you to fight that guy yet because the money ain't right. I don't want you to do, you know what I mean? So it's a lot different. And I want people you know? to get their money. Don't get me wrong, but I think you're going to yeah. get the money if you make the fight. You got to go and show out. That's you make the fight. Was. That's why Tank can get what he wants right now because he done gone in there and put people to sleep. We don't. We know at some point somebody going to sleep. Tell <laughs> yeah. Night, night, yeah. night, 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 night. Me. You know what I'm saying? Um, like for real. What, one quote before, because I, I was yeah. before I forget. Jalen Ramsey is the commissioner at the NFL. Mm. Wish I, I, I need to know the first two things you're addressing that you feel Ooh. are because because the game is important to you. Not only do you play it, you love the game. Mm-hmm. And as someone who loves the game, you want to see it improve. Yeah. What What are two things that you want to see improve in the sport that you love mm. so much? Mm. That you and your brothers be in the locker room about and be like, man, fuck. Mm. You know what I mean? That's tough because more than two things come to mind. <laughs> but I'm, okay. The, the first two things that come to mind, honestly, are... Yeah. Um, First and foremost, I would do any and everything possible for player safety. So, like right now, players are talking about, we need grass fields. It's done. Yeah. Like, it would be done. It, it wouldn't be no conversation about it. Yeah. It would, like, no conversation. Got it. If y'all think that it's this much of a difference, if y'all feel good playing on grass fields, you feel like there's less injuries, if there's statistics that say there's less injuries on grass fields, I understand the business part about it for, for y'all owners and stuff. I know why y'all want to have the turf and mm-hmm. do this because the events that y'all can bring. But these players got to actually play on the fields, though. Like, yeah. they have to actually play. They got to have if a life after if they, this. Yeah, if they can't play, if one of your top players goes down, that's not good for any of us. Yeah. I will fix that immediately. Okay. Yeah. Like, that's anything that's dealing with player safety that I can actually fix, like, some things you can't fix. Like, you can try your hardest too, but at the end of the day, football is football. It's a fierce sport. It's yeah. Gonna some, it's gonna be some injuries. It's gonna be some things that happen. But if it's something like that that I feel like I can change, and it's like, I'm, I'm telling the owners right now, I'm so, I'm sorry. I know we all rock with each other. You know how that is. But 
we got to get, get these grass fields. Okay. And y'all just going to have to hire the landscaping crew to prep the events and all. Yeah, but we got to get these grass. That's, that would be one. Like, anytime the players have, like, an outroar about something, and that's just the first thing that comes to my mind because that's mm. currently going on right now. It's like yeah. in an uproar about wanting uh, grass fields. So that it would be automatic for me is, is grass fields. Okay. And then secondly, secondly, I would address um, – I would address that the quote unquote Rooney rule. Um, man. Yeah, we let's get into this one. This because, man, I've been around some extremely good coaches in my career. Extremely good coaches. And I've been around probably two two coaches just in my mind right now. One should at least be a head one should be a be a head coach for sure. They ain't no at least. He should be a head coach. And then the other one should at least be a defensive coordinator, if not a head coach, but at least should be a defensive coordinator. But man, it's a, it's a like it's a system they got that you know they they rotate these coaches or they got their friend or their homeboy or or they have a tree mm-hmm. of people and then they get hired from that and and this and that. But I've been in locker rooms, I've been around facilities where I've seen like you know that is actually the good coach. Yeah. He should be the one with that job. Yeah. Ain't no way he's my defensive coordinator. Ain't no way he's just the DB coach. Like, I've been around those guys, you know what I mean? Um, and, yes, they've had, like, interviews and stuff like that. So, I guess you could call that a step. But Semant- in my mind. Semantics. <laughs> but in my mind, though, I'm like, there is no way yeah. that they interview him and they interview him. And he got the job. <laughs> and he got the job over him i'm like there is no way like no way you can't tell me he's a he's a better leader of men than him you can't tell me that he knows schemes better than him you can't tell me that he deserves to be this head coach more than him i'm not and i'm and i don't i ain't taking nobody blessings away like man you blessed to get what you are yeah yeah yeah. to you but yeah but it just confuses me it's baffling right that some of these some of these black black coaches in the nfl i'm tripping because like i've been like when is eric b enemy gonna get a job i haven't been around him so i can't speak on no him no directly, but i'm just but, saying but he's a guy that eric everybody Bien-Aimé, brings up like yeah. he's a guy that everybody you, brings up patrick mahomes has said i'm not me if this dude is not here i'm not me like this is why i'm who i am right mm-hmm. um or yeah. like your man raheem morris like it's, why he hasn't got a second shot after like, the temp? It's insane. That's insane. To me. It's insane to me. It's crazy. It's insane. It's insane to me. And and and, and, and whatever they try to say, you can come. Whatever argument somebody got to say, I have another one against it. I ain't gonna lie to you. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm that adamant about about yeah. like the coaches that I've been around. Like, yeah. It's like then we'll be then we'll just say then we'll be the kinda, first things it's, I, I would I would address. It's crazy, like because I saw Jeff Saturday. Consultant for the team now. No, no, but listen, he's never coached at yeah. any level other than high school, and that was just briefly. Great, I get it. Six-time Pro Bowler, not All Pro, unless you can speak to that. All Pro and Pro Bowling is different. It is different, and I, and I don't know exactly if he was All Pro or Pro Bowler. I don't because I don't. I don't. He's really a Pro centers. Bowler. I don't want center. He's so. a Pro Bowler. Six but I, I do bowler. know he was. He was Peyton he was, Manning center. He was. He was pretty good, um, but he a, but he jumps the line of all of these guys. Man, relationships. T- I, you, it's, people it's, hire their friends. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's what I was just yeah. saying. Like, yeah, yeah, That's yeah. why I would uh, address it in in some type of way. I don't I don't know how. Mm-hmm. I don't even know if there is a way. So mm-hmm. I'm not saying it is right or wrong. Is it? Is but it? But is it? Relationships can can get you further than the actual experience sometimes, Absolutely. and that's just. That's the way it is. But man. check this out. Here's That's just the, the way it is. But here, but here it is. Here's the other part of it. People hire their friends, right? Mm-hmm. And so if you don't have an like owner yeah, that looks like, like us, yeah. oh, shit. you ain't going to get no friends. Yeah, you ain't going to get there. How many? There's only going to be so many. Right. And I, think, co- and I think that's a, that's a tough part. Like, if I was a commissioner, yeah, I would love to say, man, I'm, I'm going to force these people to sell to uh we need to have out of 32 teams we need to have let's start on the low end we need to have six black owners like i would love to say that right but you can't make 
Yeah. You can't make nobody do that. You yeah. can't make nobody uh, sell their team and do yeah. this and yeah. do that. And you know, you can't you can't do that. But, um, yeah. but I, for whatever reason, I just don't think the Rooney Rule is enough. Like, okay, mm-hmm. we interviewed him, so we completed our our quota. We made we, our, yeah, we, we, met we, the quota. we interviewed him, so now we're complete with what we had to do. Yeah. But now let me go interview who I really want. Let me go interview my homeboy who I really wanted. Yeah. Like, I don't think that's enough. You know what I mean? Um, and then, oh, if you, if you, like, I, I, don't, I don't know the exact rules, but like, oh, if you hire one of them, then you might get like a draft pick or something. Like, I don't think that, like, I don't She's think that's enough. Cause, crazy. You know, some teams, some teams don't value draft picks as much. Some teams might value draft picks. Like, I don't know, right? I don't, I Your don't know. Your GM is like, fuck them picks. Right. Like, <laughs> You know what I mean? No, his GM for yeah, real. Yeah, yeah, but like, yeah. I don't. So I don't. I don't really know the exact way to 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 do it, but mm-hmm. it would be something that would be on my mind to to try to address immediately. Um, that and then you know player safety, the, the the field specifically, or any anything that they have an uproar about that they yeah. like. I would I would try to address those those two things immediately if if I was ever you know commissioner of the NFL. Or like that. So, so what's um. What's what's the next few years off the field look like for you um, as a man, as business? Yeah. Know. Um. Man, I wanna I wanna grow my family. I wanna have a little boy, man. I <laughs> love I love my little girls to death, man. But I wanna have a little boy at some point. Yeah. Um, uh, like that's and I wanna have a little boy. Um. While I'm still playing, cause it it hits a little different. I ain't gonna lie. Like love them girls to death. I really do. Like I love them girls. They love the cheerleaders. They love the, the atmosphere of the games. They love all of that. Yeah. But they don't really they're they're not gonna play football. They don't really know that mm-hmm. oh daddy made the tackle or 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 yeah. you know he's playing corner right now or he's playing oh he's playing safety this way or oh now he's on special teams. They don't know all of that, nor do I really care for them to know. I don't really want them to. But if you have a little boy mm-hmm. A little boy gonna know a little bit because he's probably gonna be into that. Yeah. Like, if my if my dad would have would have been in the NFL, I would have known exactly. My, not my dad, corner. My dad. Yeah. Yeah. On this play, he was doing this on it. Like, oh, and my dad played special teams too. He almost blocked the kick on special. Like, it's different for a little boy. So I, I do want to have like I want to grow my family, have a little boy, um, and at least like sooner rather than later, hopefully, so <laughs> that he could be. Um, you know, five and six years old, and actually be able to 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 see and notice the game a little bit, not just like it, yeah. a baby and not being able to notice. Like I, I would really, um, that's some that's like one thing that's always on my mind. I ain't gonna lie, it's, like it's always on my mind. I ain't rushing it because it got to be the right time and everything sure. like that. But that's something that's on my mind. Um, and then just like stay like really for me is like staying present in what I'm doing, like on the field, continuing to be who I am. Continuing to elevate my game as well as the people around me, trying to help them as much as I can. Cause I'm a like I'm big on trying to get other guys paid. Like I've been paid, I've been blessed, I've been this. Like I want to see, I want to see these other brothers get paid as well, and make the most out of it. Like I want to see them be able to change their lives and their families' lives for mm-hmm. generations. Mm-hmm. Like that's cool to me seeing that. Like I love seeing guys get paid. Like I ain't gonna lie that. I'd be so happy seeing guys get paid. I, That's the only I see you post it. I'd be so happy, and I'd be, and at the same time, I'd be so pissed off when I see guys getting less than what they could have got. I'm like, nah, capitalize, get all of that. You deserve that, brother. Like, we don't work too hard. Like, you got this is your chance. Hit them upside the head. Really, hit them upside the head. Take it all. Yeah. You know, like, that's really, that's what I'd be thinking. Um, it's iron sharp and iron. Yeah, man. And, um, and then continuing to be able to like change lives, like growing in my foundation work with, with my best friend Derwin James. We we started our Safety Corner Foundation, um, and and that's trying to affect you know the underserved communities uh, here in the LA area, but also back home in the Nashville, Tennessee area, and uh, back home in you know Polk County area, Florida, where he's from. Uh-huh. Um, so that's one thing that I really want to continue like growing even more in that realm, and then. Um, just aligning myself with the right people to get into the things that I want to get into after football, whenever that time may be. Not rushing that at all. I want to continue playing football for as long as I can, but getting around the right people to uh, 
like I want to, I'm, I'm very interested in EPs and being like EPs. I want to get around the, the right people, whoever, whoever them, those people might be to just learn about that along the way. Not really even necessarily get fully into it, but just learn about it and pick up stuff over time. So if that time comes, boom, mm -hmm. then I can, I can maybe transition into that. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, I, I'm interested in that. I'm interested in, I'm, I am interested in coaching, but not in college, not in the NFL, just at the high school level. So like I do high school visits now just to be around like the high school coaches and the high school kids again to see they vibe and see how they would inter would interact or see how they would um, you know cling on to any of my words that I tell them and my knowledge like seeing that has been cool for me as I I've been doing like a little high school series seeing these kids like man he knows what he's talking about he's doing, and just giving them little tips and stuff and then seeing them look at their coach like dang coach you knew you knew, you knew Jalen Ramsey and this and that. And, and then it, it gives their coach a little bit of uh, a vote of confidence. So now they listen to their coach a little bit better and stuff like that. And I like, I like, uh, I, I love the youth, man. I think the youth is, 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 it sounds cliche, but I, I feel like the youth is our future, right? So, um, you know, high, and I just remember myself playing high school football and playing with all my friends. And some of, some, some of my friends, it was their last time ever playing football again. But those moments, they enjoyed them. Man. Um, and it, you know, made an impact on their lives. And we can still talk about some of those moments. And then, you know, other guys, we advanced our career on the college and, it, and some of us in the NFL. And, but we all can look back to high school and be like, man, those were good moments to where I learned something key and um, foundational for the rest of my life. So I want to be able to change, um, you know, high schoolers' lives like that one day if I'm, if I'm in, you know, Coaching, coaching high school football or something like that. Like, read, like read the shirt. You know what I mean? Pressure, bur pressure, burst pipes and turns black kids into superheroes. Like, that's something in high school. Like, you can really mold a kid in high school to that. Like, man, all the pressure you gonna have. Are, nah, man. Mm -mm. Pressure is what you make out of it, and it's gonna turn you into a champion. It's gonna turn you into a superhero. Like, I want to be able to do that with kids um, one day. So. Yeah, man, that's that's uh that's kind of that's just like my that's like my vision, like yeah, and it's it's a growing vision, you know what I mean? But that, that's man, it right there listen. for sure. <clears throat> you know, it, we it, we've been trying to sit down with you for a long time, and we appreciate you. Again, um, for those who don't know, Jalen again it was it was and is and has been an early and continuous supporter and advocate, and. Uh, we appreciate it, man. We appreciate you again taking the time and sitting down with us, and man, blessings on everything that you uh, that you uh, that you're doing and that you will continue to do, and just love the way you're moving, man. No, I appreciate. It. I love it, and y'all know. I already know, but I'm gonna tell it, you know, on the camera. I love what y'all doing. I love, and why I've always loved, you know, this show, podcast, whatever you want to call it, is because the conversation's so different. You know what I mean? Yeah, we, 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 we talk about a little bit of the football and the blessings and this, but we, man, we talk about real life and we talk about the mental aspect of it mm. and hearing each other and the growth that we need in our lives and the grace we need to show each other. You know, this is just all stuff we just touched right now, but in yeah. all the other episodes, y'all have touched this with different people in different aspects of life, artists, entrepreneurs, other players, other athletes, what, what, whoever it may be, we all need to have these type of conversations. So that's something I've always respected and appreciated about, yeah. about, about this, man. Appreciate Love it. you, man. Sweet life, man. Uh, signing off Dream Hotel. Be kind this week. Show somebody some grace, some love. Um, special shout out to our brother, man, Jalen Ramsey, Malik Rashid, Chief Johnson. Micah. Micah, DR. DR. I appreciate y'all. Peace.